Greetings sirs and madams. Uh, so I've been wanting to make a video on creating haircuts. I've struggled with creating haircuts myself uh, in the past. So I just want to share the knowledge to anyone out there who's trying to, you know, get through this, uh, get through this phase of struggling with haircut, right? So haircuts present a very different kind of challenge. It's like, you know, the instructions, you, you know, the steps, you know what to do, but you still can't perform it. And this kind of challenge is is very close to my personal liking, right? So a little bit about myself. My name's Vineet. Uh, I'm a character artist for video games. And if you have played games like Elden Ring, Valkyrie, Elysium, etc. Uh, there will be a few more, which I cannot name right now, but uh, okay, let's leave that. So if you have played Elden Ring and Valkyrie, Elysium, then you might have come across a lot of my works. So, uh, what I'll be showing in this video series will be three different kinds of hairstyles. Uh, so one uh, is what you're looking at right now. This male hairstyle, we'll be making it by using the traditional methods. Okay, uh, b before we begin, let's just, let me just showcase you all the different hairstyles and the different techniques that we'll be using because I just don't want to stick into one traditional technique, right? But, I mean, I mean, what's the point in that? It it gets boring after like a few videos. Cool. So this is the first technique, right? And this will be basically the traditional one, which is placing and shaping hair cards manually, one by one, one at a time, right? Uh, let's let's see the second one. So this one is more of a little bit of manual, a little bit of automated. So. This technique, it might be used in some games like Final Fantasy 15. I mean, if you if you look at Final Fantasy's uh, tech demo trailers that they released for Final Fantasy 15, these uh, these are the kind of hair cards, or let's say these are the kind of techniques that they might have used in creating those kind of hair strands. Uh, okay, uh, to the next one. Uh, this will be a completely different technique which in which we'll be like creating volumes first and extract the hair cards from them. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of tricky to explain it without really showing you the technique in video. Uh, but but yeah, just know that for this one, it'll, it'll be rather more volume focused than on manual card, card placement focused, right? Also, uh, something to be noted, I'm not really extremely good at creating hair cards, right? Uh, this video will be something uh, which will help you get started uh, with creating something decent enough for your personal portfolio. You know, something that is possible, something, you know, something that will get you some likes on our station. Uh, I might cover a little bit advanced techniques on future videos, but but yeah, that, that's that's for the future. So uh, I just, let's not delve into it right now. So uh, that said, uh, let's jump into the next session. All right, let's talk references. So references are important for any kind of artwork you're doing, not just not just haircuts, right? In my case, I've, I've taken two different kinds of references. So first is the male mid hairs and second is the female bun, right? Uh, for myself, I followed this one very closely. Uh, I mean, these these things. I mean, I, I I just took them for you know, for just quality of life purposes. I just needed to know the hairs, how they look like from every angle. But if you see this one, uh, uh, right. So you can see how I followed this one. Anyways, uh, so. References are important. We get that. Now, how do we how do we collect like quality references, right? Uh, in order to just increase the efficiency of our observation and of the artwork that we are trying to do, right? So, how do I collect references? I mean, of course, you're gonna have your different ways, different websites of collecting references. I'm just gonna show you how I like to do it, right? So, uh, yeah, so. I directly do not go into any kind of website. I'd rather I'd rather go into first art station and find someone who have uh, who have made something uh, something of a breakdown and he have a really good hairstyle in his in his profile, right? So let's look at this. So this gentleman, Tomos, right? 
So he have this uh he have this artwork called Real Time Scruffy Hairs very very goes deep into it right so he have this yeah there So you have this whole video right very goes into you know very goes into how he layers the hair card and you can see he's highlighting everything right the the layers the uh the set of cards that he's using to create those layers right and you can also find a very detailed very detailed description around here about the flow about how he manually places the hair cards uh similar to this i have something uh this gentleman named named uh shin i'm i'm not going to try to sp spell the whole thing uh so he also have a very neat breakdown of how he goes into creating the hair cards so yeah here here you can see the uh, the base textures right the base cards that he is using the amount of transparency that he is allowing himself to use the secondary uh, hair cards uh more secondary hair cards more secondary hair cards and there he delve into some tertiary hair cards uh and some finer details like flyaways and stuff right other than that you can always use pinterest uh let me just open so, uh pinterest let's say for example you search for i guess i'll go with medium male hairstyles right so if you search for any kind of keywords right uh you get a lot of images related to that and the best part about pinterest is if you click on any image right it's going to show you other similar images based on the result of your current image right so yeah uh there there you go like th these are the two kind of techniques that i really like to use whenever i'm collecting references other than that i still think there is no greater references than using live photographs right now we understand that 3d artists we do not look this good right let's just be honest with ourselves so if you have a friend any family member that got a really sick hairstyle or maybe really not a sick hairstyle that you want to replicate uh just go in ask them for a, ask them for different images in case of females if you have got a partner you know you can ask for the ask for the life references or if you are just a maidenless loser like me uh, i still got you covered you know <laughs> so uh so here i have a youtube channel uh of some madam name missy uh missy seo right and she uploads uh she uploads different kind of hairstyle processes uh this is the only one that i can find where uh, you get to see the you get to see the whole thing right like you get to see the process from start to ending all the layerings and stuff so if you click on any hairstyle right let me just hit play right and if you go in and if you just you know skip some frames and stuff you can see she shows the whole thing right i mean she shows how her hairs are being layered on top of one another right and i believe that this is the uh, this is the closest thing that we can get to live references uh you know you get to know all the uh all the layerings that is being done on hairs all the all the different techniques that is being used in actual real life hairs right and in the end she also does some turn table kind of thing right so you can take screenshots of that and use it as your reference images okay uh done with that uh collect your references and let's move on to the next part hello there uh welcome to the first part of the series in this one i'll be going over the process of texture creation for hair cards a little disclaimer before i actually start narrating what's going on in the videos so first is the videos are sped up at like 2x so they can be easier to follow however if you still want them to be a little bit slower make sure that you slow down in the youtube itself because the videos are 60 fps so you won't be losing on the video quality but my voice might become a bit heavier as if it was not heavy enough already well that's it uh I might stop voicing over at times but that will be when any process gets repetitive right I'll make sure to jump time to time when anything new pops up 
you might face some frame skips during the videos, but that's just me uh, saving my work and continuing it later, right? Other than that, rest assured, you won't be missing on anything important. All right, uh, disclaimer is done. Uh, so yeah, let's let's start with let's start with narrating on what's going on. So as you can see, I like to block out the haircuts texture that I wish to make on a painting software first, right? Uh, here I'm using MidiBank. Uh, yes, you can use Photoshop if you want to. The main pointers that I keep in mind while blocking any kind of hair card textures is one, I do not need any kind of polished block out, right? I do not need any kind of uh, very fine thin strands. I just need my block out to be good enough to be able to read the opacity areas. And as you can see, while I'm blocking out, or as you will see while I'm blocking out, that there are different opacities for like the different layers, right? So the base will have the least opacity and the opacity will increase as as more as I, you know, go ahead with the flyaways and stuff. Uh, second, always color code your hair layers. In my case, I have the base textures different from secondary strands, uh, which is again different from the tertiary strands and so on. Uh, right now, you might not be able to see all the color coding of the hair cards, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm recording it after I have done everything. So, yeah, uh, right now, I'm just working on the primary hair cards. So, as you can see, there are little markers that I have written uh, on top of, like, each box, right? So, first one is base, so PR1 is primary 1, PR2 is primary 2, uh, PR3 primary 3. Then secondary one, two, three, tertiary, uh, flyaways. And then I have the last box for eyebrows and beards, right? Uh, what I'm doing right now is adjusting all the primary uh, hair card files. So I'm not drawing every one of them manually. At some cases, I'm just uh, duplicating them. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm also trying to learn how the tools work on Medibank. I'm new to the software, uh, do not have much experience using it. So I'm like, uh, in this case, I'm just trying to, trying to find, uh, you know, a good wrap brush, or you can say what we, what, what we know as puppet wrap in Photoshop, maybe. And you can already see that I'm uh, struggling a little bit with them before I find a good wrap, right? So now I'm trying to adjust the primary hair cards. So I'll be doing it with like everything, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Like mostly I'll be just creating one set of strand for every card. Right. And yeah, here you can see me like changing the color code for uh, for the different layers of cards. Right. But yeah, puppet wrap. Right. So I'll be uh, I'll be using it a lot. Uh, mostly uh, when I'm done with the first set of hair strands and for the variations, I will be using puppet wrap because I do not want to do them from from scratch. Right.
so there you have it uh as you can see i am done with the secondary uh secondary set of scarts and you can see how i color coded them so notice what i did there right so i'm just uh, notice how the consistency of the opacity remains the same uh, I don't know if it's a good way of calling it consistency of the opacity. I guess a better way is, uh, what should I say? The density of the opaque areas versus the density of the alphas, right? So you can see how consistent they are. In the in the base texture, there is, uh, there is uh, no transparent areas. In primary, there are some transparent areas. And in secondary set, there are more transparent areas which are consistent throughout uh throughout all the all the secondary block out cards right so here you have the tertiary in red and uh, here you have the uh, flyaways in yellow so you, you you don't really need to do a lot of flyaways you just need one or two strands right you can always go with one single strands and you know choose to choose to adjust them in the uh, in the hair cards itself i'm just doing it so that i can get a little bit more variation with each air card that I'm using and yeah uh, this is this will be the last layer uh, which is meant for eyebrows and beards but you'll see that I'll I'll end up not using them at all because uh, I, I won't be creating any kind of beards and stuff in this tutorial so uh, so yeah this this goes wasted I mean of course you can reuse it again later on on your different projects uh, it's always good to have a you know a complete block out whenever you are starting out. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, so the block out is done. I'm just I'm just putting a black uh, background, and uh, and I make sure that the canvas is like completely square. You know, so that I can export uh, a perfect square texture when I'm done with it. Yeah, on to the next part.